What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the last dock that you'll ever need for your handheld gaming devices. If you're like me and love to run your handhelds in desktop mode when you're not on the go, then this is perfect. It's a 12-in-1 dock by a company known as JS Aux, and I know you've probably heard of them. They make a lot of awesome accessories for the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally, but this is their brand new RGB docking station known as the HB121S, and this will work with basically anything that does USB Type-C video out. So you've got the ROG Ally, both variants, the Extreme and the non-Extreme variant. Of course, the Steam Deck. I've got some stuff that I want to test out and show you in this video, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. This will also work with your iPad, your iPhone 15, uh, basically anything that supports video over USB Type-C, you can plug into this dock and it does offer up to 100 watts of fast charging. So again, the variant we have here is the HB121S. They do offer a cheaper variant with uh, not as many features built in. This is the all clear version. And of course, as you saw at the beginning of the video, we do have some RGB. This is fully controllable from software, whether you wanna use Linux on the Steam Deck or Windows and it adds a ton of I.O. to whatever device you have this plugged into. We've got Ethernet, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, micro SD card, full-size SD card, HDMI, display port, full-size USB 3.0 ports, an extra 10 gig USB Type-C port. Basically, they've added everything to this new RGB docking station. Setup with this is really easy, and we're gonna be testing out three different devices. But first things first, just wanna show you how easy it is to get everything set up. This does come with a USB Type-C cable. It doesn't come with a fast charger. So what I've got here is the stock ROG Ally 65 watt PD charger plugged in. And Steam Deck works just fine with this. The Steam Deck OLED will do up to 45 watt fast charging. So we're over that. But the dock itself will support up to 100 watt PD fast charging. So again, lots of IO. And I do want to go over this because uh, over here on the left hand side, we've got a gigabit ethernet port. Up top, we've got a full-size SD card slot and a micro SD card slot, so you can easily add storage to whatever device you have this plugged into. Over on the right-hand side, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and one USB 2.0 port. This is the port I use for plugging in a wireless keyboard and mouse to my systems. And around back, from the left to the right, we've got our host USB Type-C port. Now this is where we're gonna plug our device in to get video over to the dock and then send out of either HDMI or the display port we have back here. We've also got an extra USB Type-C 3.2 port. This is a 10 gig port, full-size HDMI 2.1. This will do up to 8K 30 hertz as long as your device supports it. We've also got a display port 1.4, which will also do up to 8K 30 hertz, but uh, it does state over on their website that 4K up to 120, I was actually able to get more than that with the monitor I have, and I'll show you that in a second with the Steam Deck. But moving over just a little bit, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports and our PD USB Type-C power in. And just to give you an idea of the differences between the S version and the non-S version, this one does support VRR, GFT, and HDR, in which the non-S version doesn't support any of those. But if you're not worried about VRR on an external monitor or HDR, then you could definitely go with the HB121 non-S. You're not going to get those higher resolutions over DisplayPort and HDMI, but with a lot of these handhelds, you really don't need those high, high resolutions. One of the main things I was really excited about with this new dock is the fact that they added a DisplayPort. I personally like using DisplayPort with my uh, gaming monitor. And right now, I've just got power plugged in, 65-watt charger, 
display port. I've also got a wireless keyboard and mouse for the Steam Deck. And uh, as soon as you plug this in, it should pop right up for you. I kind of wish that this included a 90 degree USB type C cable. That way it's not sticking all the way up out of the top, but it does work the way we have it now. One of the main things I was interested in was checking out what kind of resolutions we could go up to with this. Now, my monitor does up to 4K 160 hertz. Now, I know there's higher refresh rate monitors out there, but I wanted to see if we could do this over the display port. And actually, it looks like we're at 4K 144 right off the bat, and it will do up to 4K 160. So that's pretty cool. 4K, 144 is where I like to sit. Now, playing games at 4K on the Steam Deck isn't going to work out very well, but you can always just change the resolution from within the game. But in desktop mode, I always like going up to 4K, and we can definitely do 1080, 120, but it doesn't look like we can do 720, 120. Now, it could just be my monitor, but right now it's saying that I can go to 720 up to 70 hertz, which is a little odd. So I do think it's my monitor itself giving me those resolutions. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was the ROG Ally. And if you're familiar with this device, you know we've basically got a desktop mode or a dock mode, whereas if you plug in a 65 watt or greater PD fast charger, it can up the wattage and go much higher than it would on battery. I've run into some cases where these USB type C docks just don't work correctly with the ROG Ally, so I definitely wanted to test it here. And by the way, I am using the ROG Ally's power supply plugged into the dock, so we do have 65 watts there. I'm just gonna head into our operation mode, manual, and yeah, so 30 watts on the SPL, the SPPT 41 watts, and the FPPT up to 53. So we can get full wattage dock mode out of the ROG Ally with this new RGB dock. And uh, for this, I'm just gonna run Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p. It really does make a difference taking that wattage up. So right now we're set up in dock mode. You can see that we're going up to around 42 watts on the APU. Taking a look at Afterburner in the top left hand corner. This game runs great on the ROG Ally in dock mode. And with dock mode, throwing a little more wattage at that APU just allows it to keep the clocks on the GPU and the CPU up, basically to the highest we can go there. In turn, giving us better performance. Next up, we've got the all-new Aya Neo slide. This has turned out to be an awesome little handheld. We've got that sliding display, and it will fit in here, closed or open. It's really up to you. I am running the APU at 28 watts, so we're kind of maxed out with the slide, but I don't need to worry about battery life because we're plugged into this dock here. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, and this game runs really, really well on this little handheld. It's powered by the Ryzen 7 7840U, so we've got plenty of power. The very last thing I wanted to show you here was the controllable RGB on the dock itself. So we're going to be using something known as OpenRGB, free download. This works for Linux or Windows. Really easy to use and set up. I've just got the dock plugged into the ROG Ally. I'm going to go ahead and launch OpenRGB. And by the way, OpenRGB also works with the ROG Ally's built-in RGB. But uh, from here, there's a lot that we can adjust. I'm just going to go with some of the presets. You can set your own up, you can change the color, you can change the brightness. I think we've got like five presets just ready to go out of the box. And you can actually sync this up with the ROG Allies built-in lighting system. So you can kind of match it up if you want to. But I do like the settings that we have here. Got this kind of stacking or trailing, which is one of my favorites. Unfortunately, this will not sync up with the ROG Ally. Uh, we just can't do that with the built-in RGB around the analog sticks on the device. So yeah, I've really been digging this new RGB docking system. And uh, as you can see on the back of the ROG Ally, I've also got JS Aux rear cover. It's got a little bit of RGB built in, kind of really goes together. Some people might not be into RGB. I mean, you can totally disable it if you want to. But the other thing we have going here is DisplayPort and all that extra I.O. I've tested this with the Steam Deck, the Ioneo Slide, the ROG Ally, and my Red Magic 9 Pro phone. So it does work with Android also. If you're interested in learning a little more, maybe pick one up, I'll leave links to their official website down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.